Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. So in this video what we're going to do is run all of the cable for the main appliances we have in the van. So we've got a whole bunch of it here and we've got some conduit to thread it through. We're going to get it all ready so that when we actually come to wire things later on it's all in the right place and good to go. So as you can probably imagine, sorting out and figuring out our electronics took us quite a long time and was not that easy to do. We pretty much think that we're there now, so we're just going to show you everywhere in the van where we think all of our appliances are going to go. First off, I'll start down here. We think that our main electronics hub is going to be down there, so our batteries, our distribution blocks, etc. And everything will run from there. So if I swing around to Tim, and he'll show you the rest. Yeah, so here is where the fridge is going to go. The fan is already installed, it's already got its wires coming down, so that's going to be hooked up here. Then on the ceiling, we're going to have lights. We've been trying to figure out today, won't we, where they're going to go. Yep. Because we've got the shower that's going to be here, so the lighting configuration has to take that into account. And then obviously we've got, we're going to have our cabinets above our bed up here, so you can't have them there, so we think they'll be in the middle here somewhere. So we want to be able to plug stuff in, so we're going to have a mixture of 12 volt and uh, 240 volt AC sockets. This is going to be our kitchen area and I think we've decided we're going to have some kind of AC outlet either here or here on this wall. This bit here is going to be our sink and then our shower and this will be a cupboard up here, larder, pantry type thing, which we might have a light strip underneath that so we need some power coming around here as well. Maybe even in this cupboard, it's a little bit dark, there's also some kind of larder there which could be quite useful. So then here is our bed, it's obviously not here yet, <laughs> hopefully soon, it'll be really good to get that in. And then I think we're going to have a couple of sockets here, uh, maybe on each side, we're not sure about that yet, we'll see how that goes. And then uh, we've obviously got the existing factory wire from the transit, which is here, which we need to kind of hide away behind some cupboards as well. We've got our solar cables coming down, so we've already got our solar panels on the roof. Well, actually, yeah, we're going to have reading lights as well around the bed, so it sounds really simple when you talk about it like that, but <laughs> we've gone through many different iterations of wiring diagram. I think this is probably number four or five. Um, but it's been really useful actually just drawing it out and trying to visualise it. Cool, so we're going to get started with running the wiring for our fridge. Um, for all the wiring we bought some conduit, so black plastic tubing essentially, 16mm and 25mm. Different sizes based on where we might have them in different places in the van, where they're going to fit kind of thing. And the reason that we use the conduit is because these edges in here are really really sharp so any wires that you're using can get severed really easily and that actually did happen to us uh, in one of our previous videos where we wired in our um, reversing camera we hadn't actually had it in any conduit yet and we were trying to figure out some wiring in this pillar here and then it stopped working and we figured that it had actually severed our wire right there just by pulling it against the metal of the van. That was a bit annoying, wasn't it? Very annoying. You can hear how sharp it is. That's what it's going against. And the gaps are really quite small like that as well. Quite hard work. That was cut pretty easily with a pen knife, as long as it's sharp. Pen knife, craft knife, Stanley knife. <laughs> You'll get there one day. There nice. So the cable we're using for the fridge is six millimeter squared diameter cable, which is this stuff, which is the equivalent of AWG gauge 10. It took a little bit of time to figure out what cable size we wanted, because it depends on what the thing is you're powering, so in this case the fridge, and also how far away it is. So the two main considerations are with the cable, if it's uh, not the right size, if it's too small for example, then as it's drawing load, the cable will heat up because it's, it's essentially a resistor, and you need to have, number one, it has to be big enough so that it can carry the load without overheating, potentially catch fire or something like that, so that's one consideration. But the second one is voltage drop, so the longer the wire, the more the voltage will actually drop between here and there. And it doesn't seem like much, but um, if you actually get a tape measure, 
So that fridge is literally just there. But that's basically two meters by the time you've gone down that wall. But then it's a DC circuit, so you also need the return path. So it's actually a four meter circuit. And over four meters, what's 12 volts here at the battery, by the time it's seen at the fridge, will actually be a bit less. And the fridge, particularly, is quite sensitive to low voltage. The voltage drop over this distance, if you're using a small, small wire, could mean that the fridge won't actually turn on. So that's why we've gone with six mil cable. Okay, I think we might need to take it out and rethink this. That's annoying. <laughs> Failed at the first hurdle. So, plan B. We've threaded one wire through, and we've tested they can, we can thread them both through when it's just kind of straight and easy. And now we've put it back into the uh, wall there, but we've also added a piece of string. So the idea is we can just pull it through like that. Oh, Feels like this shouldn't be this complicated. Yay! Finally. <laughs> nice. The wire looks like the uh, like those sweet yeah, does. laces. Licorice you get. laces. Wasn't it? <laughs> there we are. And that's the fridge wires done. On to the next one. Yeah. So we're just going to get on and do the conduit for the wiring for the fan now. And we think that we've chosen the most direct route by going sort of along here, down into this cavity, behind through this hole and then down to our electrics hub. So we've had to use this smaller one to fit through there, like that. So for the fan, we're using three mil cable, which is a duplex cable, which essentially just has the positive and the negative wires just bundled together, insulated together. Uh, just for convenience, oops, getting caught in my hair. Um, we're using that for a lot of our appliances, like the fan, the lights, the pumps, and stuff like that. We thought it'd be a bit more convenient for us just to buy it in a big spool and probably more cost effective as well. It might mean that it's over specced a little bit for some of the things we've got, but we just thought it might make it a bit easier. So, we're moving on to wiring or pre wiring for the lights now, and it's a little bit more complicated than it would be because we want to have switches in both the um, kitchen area and in the bed. They're pretty cool switches. Yeah, they're quite old-fashioned nice ones. <laughs> Rocker switches. <laughs> well probably the ones for the kitchen area will be here somewhere. So we might just build a unit where they, these can sit inside so that you, when we open the door they'll just be there and we can flick the lights on. So we want each switch to always work. So if it's off in there you can turn it on in here or if it's on in, off in here you can turn it on in there. So that means we're basically going to have to wire an extra cable just between these two switches as well. And then we want the different zones to be controlled separately. So we're going to have the kitchen you can turn on, the probably three lights around there, and then here the four for the bed. So four switches in total. <laughs> and this is our, well, one of our spotlights that we're going to use. So it's quite thin and it'll just sit flush in the cladding up there. How many people does it take to wire in a wire for a light bulb? We're just doing this bit over here um, and we realised that you can actually get this bit of plastic conduit through those holes that you can see there but it's a bit tight. it is a bit tight and you know, it wasn't the easiest of things to do. I think to make it easier for ourselves we're just going to drill a hole just about here just so that it just runs up there and it's a nice entry and exit point. So yeah that's our next job. And I actually can't get it out now that might be our next job. <laughs> <laughs> it's stuck. Oh really it's stuck. <laughs> I don't know why, but that was a little bit nerve-wracking, even though we've done a lot worse stuff. It was a bigger hole. <laughs> Pile it down a bit. Yeah, it should work. That'd be alright, wouldn't it? It's starting to look a bit like Spaghetti Junction in here, isn't it? Yeah, but that's nice though. Get all the way. Cool.
circles. We kind of think we know what we're doing now with the lights. Uh, we've wired up as much as we can now for that lighting circuit on this side of the van. It's pretty crazy. We've pretty much already used up a 30 meter spool of the three mil cable, which is insane. Uh, we're just moving on now to the other side. Um, we're just going to start wiring up for the DC charger. Yeah, so we're going to put in a DC charger, which basically allows us to charge when we're driving from the alternator. So it's got to connect to the starter battery and also to our leisure battery, which is a little bit tricky for us. The um, starter battery for the, for the van is under the driver's seat. You would ordinarily want to put it quite close to your battery, but for us, our van is about seven meters long. We worked it out as about 14 meters of Something run. Something crazy. So what we've, what we've decided to do, from looking at the charts and stuff, is go with 16 mil cable, which is the biggest gauge that you can actually put into the DC charger we've got. Um, and we're going to use the Victor and Orion. So we'll wire that up in a later video, but for now we're just going to run the cable for it. So this feels a bit wrong, but now we've got to cut the hole through our bulkhead, which we've only just put in the other day. Looks good. <laughs> it just fits in the small conduit. So we've hit another routing predicament. Abby did realise you can actually get the conduit up there. But where did it come out? Where's the end of it? It goes sort of up here and around and up there. So it's not ideal. Really. It's very twisted. So we're just debating whether to cut into this wall here or to come out the van and go through our wooden battens here. Tricky. It's tricky. Again, just all we're doing is routing a piece of tube. <laughs> but uh, yeah, lots to think about. And it is actually a single skin here, so I think we've decided we will just go ahead and drill a hole through there. I never like drilling holes in the van, though. <laughs> so I can avoid it. That's all we wanted! It's ridiculous! <laughs> Good work. Nice easy one. So we're just in the process of trying to route our reading lights for this side over here and any other wires that we might need to bring over here. Um, but in order for us to do that, we're having to build this sort of plate kind of situation. This plan that we've come up with means that this, if I can get it there, would sit up here. And then we're going to attach a piece of two by one going along here so that this wiring loom and any other wires can fit behind there. But it also gives something for our cladding to be screwed into because there's no pieces of wood here. So it's kind of a two in one solution. This is one of our favourite tools, I think. So handy, this. We don't want to drill loads, we don't want to screw loads of um, self tapping screws into the metalwork. <laughs> a bit of a workout when it's up this high. Yeah, nice. Just left the day. Tidy hole. in the sunshine over there. Such a hard life. <laughs> so we finished this one now it's all painted. I think it looks pretty good and we thought it might be good as well if we wanted to put I don't know some hooks on it so that we can string some fairy lights on or anything like that. It will look quite neat so yeah. And hopefully we've got enough space that we can get the brake light for the top yeah. brake light out if we have a problem. I think my hand can just about fit in there to unclip it so that's good. <laughs> Funky piece there now. It, it looks like plumbing. 
<laughs> mutant alien. <laughs> so we're using these sort of plastic um, black clips and we're making sure that it keeps the conduit in place by using some self-amalgamating tape just around the inside and that's not going anywhere so the, yeah looks weird but it's working so yeah that's what it'll look like and then yeah just making it up really aren't we Yeah, what we found out is that the conduit's great, but once it gets a little bit fuller, <laughs> the first cable's great, second, okay, the third one is tricky, and any after that is, you know, you're just really hoping, <laughs> especially if it's going around a bend. Are you enjoying pre-wiring? Um, it's not my favourite thing. I want to do my ceiling, but it's got to be done, isn't it? Okay, so our next job is to do the wiring for the diesel heater. Now I think that that's going to be sitting around here somewhere in the bottom of our kitchen cabinet. And it's going to go there because the diesel tank is sitting around here somewhere underneath the van. And we're going to be using 6mm square cable for it. And the reason for that is when the heater starts up and it's powered up, the glow plug has to heat up so it uses about 10 amps to do that. And then when it settles down, it generally uses between sort of one and four amps. So if it wasn't for the startup drawer, we could get away with a much smaller size wire. So when we were trying to figure out what sort of size cables we needed, we found this chart to be really useful. And this is by Blue Sea Systems. So you've got AWG, which stands for American Wire Gauge. Um, and that sort of converts it here nice and handily to the metric sizes. So for example, a 10 gauge wire equates to a six mil squared wire. And then over here you can see, depending on the length of wire that you need to go to your device, it will then tell you what gauge of wire you need for that. So up here, anything up to five amps, you know, for something that's only three meters away, you'll need 16 gauge wire. And it goes all the way up here to 200 amp, and that, that gets to the really thick wires and stuff like that. Over here, you're talking about stuff for your batteries and really big heavy duty things. So the next one we've been pondering is a wire for a light for the kitchen area. So we're just trying to figure out the best way to run that. We were going to do it just going along the garage with the other ones up here and along, because um, that's obviously like the shortest path. But we realise it's probably easier, even though it feels a bit wrong, to go up this way, along there, along the ceiling all the way around, so around the back of the van. It's actually only about 80 centimetres in it, but makes it a lot simpler because we've already got that there. Yeah, just figuring out the path you're going to do is one of the hardest parts. <laughs> <laughs> this has been like a workout doing this thing at the top, it's ridiculous. This doesn't look like much, but just getting this in there has uh, been quite tiring. For some reason, this one on this side was a lot harder. We carved out an area in this wood here for that existing factory loom to come there, because yeah, we didn't want to split that. Yeah. And just, it's going to tuck around there, we'll just yeah. tape that in. Yeah, it's very stubborn that thing. It's a bit stubborn, but it's, uh, it's, looking, it's looking pretty tidy. Yeah, not bad. So one of the last things we've got left to do is run the cables for the sockets. It's really tricky to figure out where you want to be able to do stuff, but this is going to be kind of our living area where we might have a laptop out some of that. 
So we're going to have a socket here, which will be on the back of the fridge. Uh, the fridge, like, uh, you know, what's it called? Panel. The, the panel that houses the fridge, <laughs> be on the back of there. Um, and then in the kitchen here, we've already run the 12 volt socket actually. So that's this one. And we've got to get an AC one round to that area as well. Mm. It's a little bit busy around yeah. here, isn't it? It's a bit of a traffic jam. It is a bit of a traffic jam. It's <laughs> going to get worse as well. Because <laughs> we've got some extra tube of conduit for the AC because it's better to have the AC wiring completely separate from the DC wiring. You don't want to induce uh, voltage or anything onto the other wires. And this is one of the annoying bits because here is a very, very rigid pillar in there. So it's no going through that thing. Mm -hmm. Do not want to start drilling through that. So I think what we're going to do is come through here and out and then just cut through this wood and then come out this way. Maybe just enlarge that little hole and fall out and then it should come to around about the same spot. Groovy. So we drilled through the, the van at these two points. Tim thinks it looks a bit like a face. It's like a little <laughs> cartoon character with, with goggles on it. It's like a minion or something, isn't it? It just needs to be yellow. Um, we've gone through there because we're going to have a lot of wires coming from our battery and stuff over there along the garage to here and then in order for us to get some wires up to the um, switch panel and stuff like that the only real way to get through was to drill these holes but it's a single skin so it wasn't too bad. So we've run the wire for the AC sockets, one at the bulkhead, one at the fridge and then one come up here. The wire we're using for the AC side is um, Standard kind of twin and earth like in a house, but the difference is it's stranded. Um, it's two and a half mil squared, and it's really important to get stranded wire for everything in the van because it's going to be moving and there's a lot of vibration on the road. You don't want anything to break. If it was just a pure single copper conductor, then um, you'd have problems down the road. And the same for the 12 volt wires. You can see it's everything stranded. We've got the AC socket and the 12 volt socket. Um, this would be like a normal three pin socket like you'd have in the house. And we actually don't have many devices that are going to go on this, but we've put it in because uh, we've got Abby's hairdryer. <laughs> keep thing. going on about my hairdryer. <laughs> the main thing we've installed this cable all the way around the fan is so that she could use a hairdryer. There in the might morning. be some kitchen appliances. Yeah, and, and a laptop charger, stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but it, it gives us the option in the future. You know, we're not restricted. We can plug in a very low powered cooking thing. <laughs> <laughs> we've made sure to label each cable because now they're going in this crazy little pattern around the fan. Okay, so we think that's pretty much everything that we can possibly do for our pre-wiring. So in a future video, we'll be connecting it all up to our batteries and our main electrics hub. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see that. Hope you enjoyed this one. It's looking good, I think. We're at a good stage now. <laughs> we'll see you next time.